chapter 2 of the book of Exodus. If you'll stand with me for the reading of God's word, I'll read down the first 10 verses. It says, And there was when a man of the house of Levi and took a wife to a daughter of Levi. And a woman conceived and bare a son. And when she saw him that he was a godly child, she hid him for three months. And when she could no longer hide him, she took him for him, she took for him an ark of bulrushes and daubed it with slime and with pitch, and put the child therein. She laid it in the flags by the river's brink. And his sister stood afar off to wit what would be done to him. And the daughter of Pharaoh came down to wash herself at the river, and her maidens walked along by the river's side. And when she saw the ark among the flags, she sent her maid to fetch it. And when she had opened it, she saw the child, and behold, the babe wept. And she had compassion on him, and said, This is one of the Hebrew children. And then said her sister to Pharaoh's daughter, Shall I go and call thee a nurse for the Hebrew, from the Hebrew women, that she may nurse the child for thee? And Pharaoh's daughter said to her, Go. And the maid went and called the child's mother. And Pharaoh's daughter said unto her, Take this child away, nurse it for me, and I will give thee wages. And the woman took the child and nursed it. And the child grew, and she brought him up unto Pharaoh's daughter, and he became her son. And she called his name Moses and said, Because I draw him out of the water. The ma mothers has, uh, can teach you about foresight. She says, make sure you wear clean underwear in case you have an accident. She can always see what's in the future. Mothers teach us about logic. She says, if you fall out that, out that tree and break your neck, don't come crying to me. Mothers teach us about maturity. Eat your vegetables or you'll never grow up. She'll teach you about religion. You better pray. That comes out of the carpet. She'll teach you about travel. If you don't straighten up, I'm going to knock you into the middle of next week. She'll teach us about contradictions. Shut your mouth and eat your dinner. And then, uh, you know, a, a couple more. Mothers teach us about perseverance. You are going to sit here until you eat every one of those vegetables. She teaches you about genetics. You're just like your father. <laughs> Mom teaches us about the weather. It looks like a tornado swept through this room. I think Miss Angela talked about that this morning. And mothers teach us about the circle of life. I brought you into this world. I can take you out. Amen. Amen. Now this young lady I'm reading about this morning, chapter 2 of Exodus, this mother of Moses right here, I just want you to catch, catch a couple of points, and I, again, I'll try to be brief this morning if I can for you. I know Miss Angela's already uh, insulted me and told me that you probably wouldn't be leaving until 1.30 today, but that's okay. I'll try to get you out before 1.30, but I want you to take a look with me for just a minute at this mother. It says in chapter 2 and verse number 1, it says, There went a man out of the house of Levi and took a wife, a daughter of Levi. Now you say, well, that's confusing, preacher. I don't understand. Well, that's simple. Uh, it was a man took him a wife out of the same tribe of the tribe of Levi. It's very simple to tell you. So he fell in love with this young lady and he married her. Uh, and then the woman conceived in verse number two and says, bore a son. And when she saw that he was a goodly child. Now, in this word in the King James right here, it shows that goodly means that he was a, a, a pretty Pretty boy. He was a pretty boy, a good-looking boy. But I'm going to say this in, in defense of all you mothers. I have never went to the hospital. I have never seen a baby that was ugly in my life according to the mothers. Now, I have seen some ugly babies, but not according to the mothers. 
their baby is the prettiest baby that ever that's in there. I heard I heard a little story uh, about uh, some people that went to the window when they used to do that. When they went to the window to look in at the children, and they said, "Oh, there he is, right there." And they was all comparing him, and they said, "He's got my eyes," and the other one said, "Well, he's got my hair," and the other one said, "Well, he's got my uh, uh, facial looks and all." And they were standing there, and they had him all sized up. And then the nurse walked over and said. That's not your grandson, and that's not your son. So, uh, but but all of them are. But anyway, it says there that that she said that he was a goodly child, and so what that means too in in uh, uh, the King James version and in that that. that time right there she saw her baby boy and she was a goodly child in other words she looked at him and she knew within her heart that God had a special purpose for him that God had something a work for him to do and it says that uh, she hid him for three long months now so you'll understand why she hid him for three months in the first chapter over here old Pharaoh had looked around and the children of Israel was growing in numbers and all and he looked around and he said man if we don't do something if we don't do something they're going to outnumber us and they're going to take over so he set out a decree that he would have all the male babies of the Hebrew children he would have all the male babies killed and so uh, he set out to do that well he had some what called midwives that were supposed to go and as soon as the ladies delivered if it was a boy child they were to cast him into the Nile River River, which was crocodile infested and if crocodiles didn't get him why well, he would drown and and so but the ladies feared God he feared they feared God and so they didn't do that well he come down and he asked them why and he, they said well said hey these ladies deliver so fast and all and said they, they already have these babies and we're done before we come and so then he gets down in verse 22 of chapter 1 he charged all the people then that if they saw one of these uh, sons that they were to cast him into the river so now that's what she's facing now she's had this baby she's had this goodly baby that she thinks and she knows within her heart that God has got something for him to do and she has got him there and she hid him for three months now I think in this period of time and three months all he was doing was eating and sleeping and other things too but eating and sleeping mainly and that's all he was doing keeping quiet but then after the period of three Three months was up when she could no longer hide him the third verse says she took him from the ark of the bulrushes and she made an ark and it describes it there in verse number three but here's what I want you to understand she this lady here that believed in God she trusted God she asked God for a plan she asked God to work this thing out she asked God to show her the way that her son would not be killed and I'm going to say this this morning I have stood here for 20 years in front of this pulpit with you and I have heard big men big burly men stand here and tell me that their mothers had it not been for their mothers praying for them had it been not been for their mothers that, that had talked to God on their behalf they would have been dead and gone but because their mother was a praying godly mother that they were still alive and still serving God I'm going to tell you this morning that mothers we need to take a lesson from this young lady here that if you got children if you've got uh, little ones and all and whether they be grown or little ones and all we need to, to talk to God about them and we need to ask God for a plan of action to keep them safe especially in this world in which we live in today because I'm telling you this world is moving fast this world is as I heard somebody say the other day this world is going to hell in the handbasket very fastly but I'm telling you the devil's trying to take over so we we need some more praying mothers that are not afraid to get down on their knees and ask God to give them a plan, ask God to show them a direction uh, for what they should do because this young lady asked God for a plan and he gave it to her. Now uh, if you asked him for one, look out. He's going to give you one and you better have enough faith that you're going to listen and you're going to apply whatever it is he tells you to do. Now sometimes it makes absolutely no sense what 
God's going to tell you to do. That's why this story is so intriguing right here. The plan that she prayed for and that she got from God, it sounds like, it sounds like to me, if you listen to it and you look at it, it sounds like she's just going to set him in this ark. She's going to set him in this basket and he's going to float down the river. It's going to tip over and he's still going to drown. But I'm telling you, when you get down on your knees and you talk to God about it and God gives that direction to you, he's going to work it out if he gives it to you. So here she's asked him for a plan and he gives it to her and he tells her, said, make this the lark. And she said, tells her exactly how to make it. Now, uh, for time purposes, I can't go into that, but it's built similar to the old Noah's ark was there back when his time. But anyway, she makes this ark and it says it makes an ark of bulrushes. And I looked this part up and I will tell you this, those bulrushes or those, uh, those weeds or those vines that it's made out of before she uh, uh, did all the waterproofing of it those were to keep the alligators out because they did not like this particular vine that she made this out of so that was to protect him from the alligators and then she put this there asphalt or this tar and pitch on it and that was to waterproof it God knew exactly what he was doing if we just listen to him and we just work with his plan God will always tell you the right thing and he'll always do uh, what's best for you and your children if we We'll just apply it to that situation. But anyway, that's what about the ark's all about. And then, then it says there that when she made this, she had the hard, hard thing, decision to do to put him in this ark. Now, let me tell you something, ladies. I have never given birth, of course, but I, I have watched my wife uh, get close. Now, you say, get close? What do you mean? Well, back, it's been so long since we had children. That was the time when they used to lock you out because uh, I remember old Dr. Hal on the last one, he told me, he said, you can't stand it. You need to get out of here and go up there to the waiting room. He said, I'm going to hold her hand and I'm going to see about her for you. So I never did get to sit in the room while she gave birth to my two girls but I know my girls have given birth and everybody just goes in the room takes them a camera nowadays everybody goes in and just takes pictures and videos and all but anyway nevertheless and I'll uh, what did, did I get off of that huh how did I get on that Mike I you don't know, do you? Huh? But nevertheless, nevertheless, this, this mother, this mother, she puts him in this basket. She puts him in there. And I'm telling you, that's a hard thing for her to do. By faith, she trusted God. By faith, she knew God was going to work it out. By faith, she laid him in this basket. Now, you say, by faith, she did all this. She made the basket. She put him in the basket. Here's where some real faith comes in. Then she had to set him into the water. She had to set him into the river, this crocodile-infested, nasty river. She she had to put him in there. Now, she does that believing that God was going to work a miracle for her. Ladies, I can't pass up the opportunity for you this morning that if you will pray, ask God, and he gives you an answer, set back and trust him by faith that he's going to work it out, that he's going to take care of them. And I'm going to tell you the worst thing with children is when they, they grow up. When they're little in them baskets, like we've got several around here this morning, you've got them right under your thumb. You've got them right there. You're carrying them around. But as they get older, and especially when they go to getting about 16 like Miss Eric, back here they have to drive everywhere you cannot drive them anywhere anymore they have to drive their self and so right right Erica you have to drive yourself now your mom and daddy can't drive your papa can't drive papa taught her to drive but now papa can't drive and she has to drive herself now she drives better than he does but what happens is and what's happening here is that she set him off and she sent him down down the river and I'm telling you this morning that had to be an act of faith 
same as I was fixing to tell you about the children as they grow up and you send them out first day of school man that whoa man that's that's terrible send them to kindergarten after you've watched them for four and five years and all and have to go and leave them there for hours at kindergarten then they go to school and then they go to to uh, on up in school and then they go to driving and then they go to college and in the case of Miss Heather back there I pray for you Miss Heather she's going to have to watch Colton go off to to the military and be gone a few uh, a while let me tell you something by faith trust God that God is going to work it out but first pray and ask God to do that this morning mothers and continue to pray because I'm telling you as Beverly has already told you this morning I had a, a godly mother that brought me to church here I had a, a two grandmothers that uh, godly grandmothers that took care of me and loved me and seen about me I had a great mother-in-law as she's already told you and, and I had people that seen about me I had a young lady that has been passed away one year and one day Miss Polly Lee that treated me like her son and all she's been gone one year and one day today she went home to be with the Lord in the 11th of May last year but she seen about me like her son right up until last year when she passed away I'm telling you when them mothers pray and they get down on their knees folks and they're right with God look out something is going to change and something is going to take place and something is going miraculous is going to happen I'm telling you God still works things out and he still answers prayers if you pray them by faith to him this morning oh but look she puts him in there and now he goes he goes floating out into the river and man that had to be hard to do but now she sets back she don't even she walks on back away but she sends his his sister Miriam he she sends her down to watch and see what happens she sends her there and you know what sure enough just as I'm standing in front of you today God works a miraculous miracle God works a miraculous miracle they had set the boy in the water they had put him in there around the reeds and all the uh, the weeds and the reeds and whatever you whichever version you're looking at this morning but then then I want you to listen to this I want you to listen to how what a plan that God puts together because this mother's faith and prayer how did he put this together now at this particular spot that he's sitting in in the river this particular spot this happens to be just coincidental happens to be the t- the place that Pharaoh the man that ordered the decree to kill all the Hebrew boys that his daughter comes down to the river it just happens to be the spot where she's going to take a bath in that, that, in that day and just happens to be people say well that's this luck preacher no it's not luck it is God's favor this morning it is God's blessing this morning because somebody has prayed for you and somebody has had the faith in God that God's going to work a plan for you this morning that's what it's all about that's what it's all about but anyway here it just so happens she comes walking down to the river this so happens she comes down to that spot and now it just so happens she sees this little ark over in the bushes and it just so happens that she sends someone she says go get it and then here I will show you they pull it out of the water and then she opens the little ark guess what Moses did I believe that God pinched that baby at that particular time because I'm telling you when she opened the lid or the cover that baby started crying and you know how a crying baby is you oh man that'll melt your heart got to get it whatever it wants But anyway, at that exact time, he cried. This this Pharaoh's daughter, now, she's in a situation here. 
Her dad said that he's got to die. But remember, she's the king of Pharaoh's daughter. Now, what does she do? She says, hey, uh, uh, of course, she's standing there, and she opens it, and he cries. But here's where Miriam, his good sister, comes in to the plan. She says, uh, would you like for me to go get one of the Hebrew women? Because she, she identified him. She said he's one of them Hebrew children. Said, would you like for me to go get one of them Hebrew women to nurse him for you? And you know what Pharaoh's daughter said? Yes, sure. Go get me one. Well, guess what Miriam does? She goes and gets her mama, Moses' mama, and says, hey, mom. Your prayers have been answered. Come on down here. Come down to the river. Come on down. Well, this story even gets better. Because what happens is, now, she says, Pharaoh's daughter says, Would you take him and raise him for me we, until he wean him? Would you feed him for me? And she says, sure. But not only that, remember this story. Here's what I want you to understand. If God's plan, God's working, okay? God has not forgot. Remember, Jochebed is a slave. She's a slave working for nothing. Read your Bibles right there. What does Pharaoh's daughter say? I will pay you wages. Now, she's became an employee of Pharaoh's daughter, going to get paid to breastfeed, I'll just get blunt with you, to breastfeed her own child that was supposed to be killed by the lady that got her to do this, his dad. Do you think God can't still work miracles out for you? You think God don't hear, still hear prayers? Do you think faith does not count in this situation? But oh look, now she's hired her. She said, take it and nurse it for me and I will give thee wages. And of course, Jochebed, his mother, took the child and nursed him. And the child grew and she brought him unto Pharaoh's daughter. Now, they say, and, and commentary say, this is about two to three years old, that she actually takes him to the palace. She takes him there. And it says that Pharaoh's, uh, he became Pharaoh's daughter's son. And she called his name Moses, because I drew him out of the water. Now listen, I'm on her and close here for just a minute. God's plan, God's plan is working right now. It's working now. She's going to get to care for him until this two, three-year period is up. Then she's going to take him to the palace. Not only does Pharaoh... Jesus on the